Hello geometry students and welcome back to another video lesson where we start a new chapter on triangle congruence and looking at how we can write triangle congruence statements as well as determine which triangle congruence theorem we need to use based upon a diagram that's given to us. And so we did a little bit of exploring yesterday between what these, these triangle congruence theorems are and how to draw the pictures. And so from yesterday's, um, let's make myself just maybe a, a little bit, oh no, it's as small as it goes, sorry. So there we go. So yesterday's exploration asked you to try and draw some pictures that represented these. These are the four triangle congruence theorems. These are the four ways that we can prove two triangles are congruent, that they, they are congruent. SSS, meaning side, side, side. If I can prove that these three sides are congruent to the three sides over there, then these two triangles are congruent. Side, angle, side. Notice we have to have an angle that's in between the two sides, right? Side, angle, side. If I walk around, side, angle, side. Then we've got angle, side, angle, where the side is sandwiched in between the two angles that are congruent. Angle, side, angle, two angle, side, angle. And then we've got angle, angle, side. An angle to an angle to a side, an angle to an angle to a side. So those are the four triangle congruence theorems. I would perhaps maybe, you know, write those diagrams down right here. When we have evidence that one of these four theorems is occurring between two different triangles, we can then say that the two triangles are congruent. But we need evidence. And the tricky part in this particular section is that they don't always just give us two triangles straight up that have all of the evidence. Sometimes we have to use our uh, investigative skills to go back into what we've already done in geometry and figure out, uh, you know, what are some other properties, definitions, theorems that I could use that might help. The other part that's tricky is, is writing the triangle congruence statements. So from earlier in the year, and again, this is another great example to write down. If I were to say that triangle top, T-O-P, is congruent to triangle C-A-N, that is the triangle congruence statement. So that's what we're looking for you to write when we ask for a triangle congruence statement. But remember, there's this unique relationship. T and C are going to be congruent. O and A are going to be congruent. P and N are going to be congruent, right? The order, that's why the notation is so important here. The order that we write them helps us to define these, the congruent angles and the congruent segments, right? So the angles, as I said, that T is congruent to C. So if I were to draw it, they both have one, you know, one arc. T is to C. O is to A, O down here to A, and I might use two, or P to N, I might use three. Same thing with the congruent segments. I have to connect TO with two marks, and since TO are the first two, CA are the, the first two, CA would have those two tick marks. O, P are the middle and the last, A, N, so they both have to have the same amount of tick marks. Okay, we do have to match these up. So I'm going to go through a bunch of examples asking us to write the triangle congruence statement based upon what do we see and then justify what allows us to say that. So write a triangle congruence statement and justify the conclusion. Which theorem do we have pictured here? Well, this is side, side, side. Okay, so that's our justification. Side, 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 because... AB is to XY, AC is to XZ, and BC is to YZ. So therefore, we'll start with one triangle. Triangle ABC is congruent to, and never assume that they're just going to follow an alphabetical order. We do have to kind of try and match up. 
notice that A is the vertex of the one tick mark line and the two tick mark. Over here, one and two, the vertex is X. So it does start with X. And then follow. Where does the one tick mark lead you? To Y, which means Z would have to be left. And we're going to say those two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Okay. Next one. How are these two triangles congruent? What theorem? Well, if we follow the pattern, I've got a side to an angle to a side. Side to an angle to a side. So by side, angle, side. And now I've got to try and come up with this triangle congruence statement. Triangle AGN. is congruent to triangle. I know the middle one has to definitely be T because that's the angle, G and T. So those have to match up. If I turn that, we'd have L to T to E by side angle side. Okay, and we're, we're trying to pay close attention to how they're written in the diagram that they give us. Next one. Write a triangle congruence statement and justify this conclusion. Well, if we look carefully, we've got an angle that matches an angle, a side that matches a side, and an angle that matches an angle. And if we follow in order, angle, side, angle, we have now discovered we have ASA, angle, side, angle. The trick is now going to be trying to write this triangle congruence. That triangle ANG is congruent to triangle. What angle does A match up with? It does match up with I. What angle does N match up with? It matches up with R, which means T must be the last one with no mark and no mark. So those are straightforward, what I would call straightforward triangle congruence questions. The difficulty becomes what happens when they don't give us something that just has everything marked and we have to use our investigative skills. In this image below, only two parts are congruent in the triangle. We need to determine what third part is congruent and then justify that conclusion. Then we're going to write a triangle statement and justify the triangle congruent statement. So it's kind of like a little mini proof, if you will. So in that diagram down there, something is missing that I can say is congruent. Anybody know? Well, maybe you saw that this angle right here is congruent to that angle. Angle A, N, G is congruent to angle T, N, I. What allows me to say that? Those are, remember, called vertical angles. Because they're vertical and they're opposite each other, they're going to be congruent. Now that we have this angle congruent to another angle, I have a side to a side, an angle to an angle, and a side to a side. Side, angle, side. So the justification for our two triangles being congruent now is side, angle, side. So notice, you're going to have to have sometimes a first step that helps you get the congruent statement. Triangle A to N. Triangle A and G is congruent. This is the trick. Well, N we know has to be in the middle because that's the same one in both. So N will be in the middle. What angle matches up with A? Well, notice I go from N to the two tick marks to A. So N to the two tick marks to A, or it would be to I. 
I N and then to T. I N T. So again, you're going to have to sometimes use investigative skills. Last one. Imagine uh, in the image below, only two parts are congruent in the triangles. Determine what third part is congruent and justify that conclusion. Then write a triangle congruent statement and justify that. So you'll notice I've got an angle down here with one mark and an angle down here with one mark. Two marks on that one, two marks. Now, what's sometimes helpful in these is to pull these two triangles apart, perhaps. One and two. All right, so that you can see that you have two triangles and one mark down there and two marks down here. This is A and this is G. This is T. This is A. This was G. Oops, G. And this was N. So it helps to maybe just redraw the two different triangles if they're connected. Now notice I've got AG and AG in both. And if I go back to my diagram, AG to AG, but that's the same line. So it's going to have to be congruent to itself. AG is congruent to AG. And this is a property that we haven't used a whole lot yet, but it is called reflexive. It's like a mirror reflection, right? You see yourself. This is the reflexive property. My mouse does not want to cooperate today. So this side is congruent to this side. All right, if we look, we've got an angle, a side, and an angle. Angle, side, angle. So that was one of our reasons. Angle, side, angle. And now we could come up with our triangle statements. We're going to start with the one up here and go A to N to G. Is congruent to triangle. Now I've got to look carefully here. One mark in the corner for A, which one has one mark? The G. The N has no congruent marks. So over here, the T has no congruent marks. And then I go and finish. That G matches with A. That G matches with that A. So triangle A and G is congruent to triangle GTA. The notation on these is super critical. Uh, this goes back to making sure you understand how to walk around a triangle and what parts do indeed match up. So again, you are trying to prove in two triangles that one of these four things is happening. These are the only four that we can use to show that two triangles are congruent. If you have any questions, please make sure that you reach out. Otherwise, until next time, everyone, stay safe.